Hello and welcome to Maestro for Drupal 7. Today I'm going to show you the Maestro Admin Interface and Workflow Editor. We're going to create a sample workflow for a technical support request and see what it looks like when it runs. There are a few things to note before we get into the details. First of all, I've created a content type called Technical Support Request. It has five fields, Title, Request, Attachment, and, for the admins to fill out later, there's a signee and response. Next, I've installed the CCK module and the user reference submodule for use in our content type. Here's just a quick overview of the process of the workflow that we will be creating. First, the initiator will create the support request. Then, the IT manager will review the request and assign someone to it. That assignee will fill out a response and finally the initiator will review and either accept or reject the response. If he rejects the response then it will go back to the initiator for more details. Now we're ready to get into the workflow admin to define our workflow. First of all let's create the new workflow definition. The start and end tasks are created automatically for every workflow. They are the first and last tasks of every workflow. Start is, an, is the entry point for the workflow and end is the exit point. They don't serve any other purpose other than a good complete visual workflow as well as a good point for the workflow engine to know where to start and when it's finished a process. Our first real task is to create a technical support request which we will use the content type task for. The content type task allows the user to create a piece of content that will be used throughout the rest of the workflow. We will assign this task by variable to the initiator, which is a process variable that tracks whoever launched this workflow. Next, we'll create the review and assign task. This task will also be a content type task, only Maestro will automatically see that one version of this content type has already been created within this workflow, and the second task will pull in the results of the original technical support submission. This time, however, the IT manager will choose an assignee. We're going to assign this task by static user, which means in this case the IT manager will always get this task assigned to him. It's also worth noting that in the next version of Maestro we will be able to assign by role or organic group as well. So we could assign this task to a whole role and once the first user from that role completes the task, the task will be removed for everyone else. We can also set up notifications for this task and on four different events. On task assignment is the most common event which will let the user know when they have a new task to complete. Similarly, on completion, we'll let another site user know when the task owner completes the task. You can define task reminders that remind a user of an outstanding task in their task console after a certain amount of days, and similarly, you can set, send an escalation notice when the task has been outstanding for a certain period of time. Back to our flow, we now need a task to read the assignee value on our, our IT manager set on the previous task. To do that, we'll use the set process variable task. At this point, we'll also need to edit our process variables. A process variable is a piece of information specific to a particular process. If that doesn't make any sense just yet, just watch. All workflows will automatically generate the initiator process variable. The Maestro engine will automatically set that variable to whoever launched the workflow. We, we want to create a second process variable that will track the assignee. 
our set process variable task will pull the value from the assignee field from our content type and set the assignee process variable. Now our next task can be assigned by the assignee process variable. The next task will also be the content type task since we are still passing around the same piece of content. This is the task which the assignee will fill out for a response to the technical support request. Our last interactive task is for the initiator to review the response and determine if it does in fact solve his problem. If so, he will accept and the workflow will end. Otherwise, on rejection, we'll assign the initial task to start the process over again. That gives the initiator the opportunity to refine his question and the IT department will take it from there. For this task, we are going to use the interactive function task. There is a nice interactive function that has already been written to accept or reject a content type. This is the Maestro Review Content Type function. We'll see in a few minutes what the interactive function looks like, but if you want more information about this task, check out our blog at nexttide.ca where Blaine has just created a complete description of how to use the interactive function task. I'm just going to draw the lines between the tasks here which tells the editor uh, the order of the workflow. Finally, we need an if task to read the accept or reject flag of the initiator's review and act accordingly. For the maestro review content type function, we need to be checking the last task's status. If the last task status is success, then we will complete the workflow, and on reject, we'll draw our fail line back to the first interactive task, which is for the initiator to add details to the support question. Now our workflow is complete, and that only took what? 10 minutes? So let's see it in action. We launch the new workflow, and remember, whoever launches the workflow becomes the initiator, right? So we'll fill out our request and leave the IT fields for now. Now we'll flip over to the IT Manager's Task Console and review the task. Well, that looks like a good issue for Jordan to solve. So we'll complete this task. Now remember, behind the scenes, the set process variable task is running and reading the value of that assignee dropdown. Now we'll flip over to Jordan's task console. And create the response. And complete.
Finally, back to admin's task console, who was the initiator of this process. We'll get the approver reject task. Just review it. Yep, that solves my problem. Thanks. Complete the task. That's it. That's how to define a workflow. But wait. What happens if the initiator rejects the task? Well, looking back to our workflow admin, there's one thing you have to do. That is, to set the task to regenerate. Regenerate tells the engine that yes, you've done this task before, but I want you to do it again. There's a big discussion around task regeneration, but that's for another day. For now, just know that if the workflow is going to come back to a task that it's already been run, you need to set the regen flag. But besides that, there's one other thing that you might notice. If the user rejects the task, it's going to go back to the IT manager to set the assignee again, but we already have one set. So let's just add another if task here to void the X task on subsequent iterations of the process. By variable this time, if assignee is greater than zero, That's it. Hopefully you had an easy time following me, but if you have any questions at all, post them in our forums. And be sure to check us out at nexttide.ca where you will find all the latest demos and module tutorials.